let, let me come to you, Julius. Mm -hmm. um, now, when when let, let's talk about the, the judiciary, because now we need to also not fail to address the legal issues that were also highlighted in the report. Deputy President William Ruto said this, and I quote. On the matter of the judiciary, allow me to say that there is a huge space to have an improvement on the proposal that has been made. Having an ombudsman appointed by the executive into the judiciary is a derogation from the independence of the institution. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, not absolutely. Uh, Somehow, I, I agree to, uh, to an extent that... Uh, uh, questions of independence of the judiciary will arise mm -hmm. when you have an ombudsman appointed by the executive coming from a lawyer does it but the affect you the, the issue is the question is mm. what is the role of, of the judiciary ombudsman? ombudsman that's it of the ombudsman Correct. the ombudsman mm. is now what i would call the prefect somebody that araya would go and report to when they have problems emanating from the judiciary if they have a problem with a particular court they have a problem with a particular judge. They have a problem following a particular case. Where do they go to? They go to the ombudsman. Mm -hmm. Now, if this ombudsman is appointed by the Judicial Service Commission and he's supposed to be like a watchdog against the Judicial Service Commission and its appointees, the judges and the magistrates, mm -hmm. how will you report to him if he's appointed by the same institution Mm -hmm. that you are complaining against then there is no independence how do, how do you how do you report to him there will be conflict of interest if the ombudsman is appointed by the judicial service commission mm -hmm. and then araya wants to report against the judicial service commission to the ombudsman how will he now watch over <laughs> the person who appointed him so it's this there's a, there's a question it's it's a catch 22 it's mm -hmm. a catch 22 it's, there's a problem if it's appointed by the executive, mm. and there's, there's a problem, problem if it's not it's appointed by the other side. But it's a conversation that I think is still it is healthy to have. All right, and uh, it puts oh. a question about the independence of the judiciary. I I, I agree with yeah. Wakili. Yes, but look at the role of uh, that uh, amendment in Article 172. Now, the judiciary ombudsman has got three specific roles, but most importantly, is to encourage transparency. Remember, this is a judiciary that has been accused. Mm -hmm. of bribery, has been accused of corruption, so many things. And therefore, there must be another angle of looking at that accusation and sorting it out. But again, look at the JSC. These mm -hmm. are also members of JSC. So yes. for me, the, judi the judiciary ombudsman does not do the discipline. They don't do that. They're just prefect. They're doing the investigation. Then they fought with JSC. JSC does the discipline now, and even uh, management. I want to believe... Mm -hmm. As we are talking about judiciary, yes. if you look at the substantive amendments in the judiciary, look at the amendment in appointing the Court of Appeal president. Mm. They have given them their time, time, time limit of five years. Look at the appointment, that the, the, the experience that they need to be appointed as chief justice, 20 years now, not 15. Look at the appointment for the judges in the Supreme Court, now 15 years, not 10. It means... You are taking efficiency, suitability, and competency into the judiciary. You right. are actually strengthening judiciary. And that is a question. Is the in judiciary going to be independent? Let's take a look at what Honorable Musala Mudavadi said about this. The judiciary is independent. There's a very good provision recommending the appointment of the ombudsman to handle the issues of the judiciary. I think that is good. However, I strongly believe that in order to enhance the independence of the judiciary, that... All right, uh, there is that last part. Mm -hmm. In order to, uh, to enhance the independence of the, the, the judiciary, mm -hmm. he was saying that that part needs to be looked into. Um, you are um, an advocate coming from you, what do you think needs to be done? Because we said the BBI is a report that needs to be looked into. Uh, there are some issues that can be corrected here and there. Is this one issue? Well, what really needs to be done to the judiciary uh, to be actually independent, so to speak, is to give them what we call financial independence. 
-hmm. that is actually what will answer uh, uh, the, 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 the query we are talking about not even to do, to, to have to do with the, with, the, with the ombudsman because the problem is that the judiciary still has to go back all every time to the executive and parliament to give them money whenever they need money to do a project okay that is why uh, if i remember the dp yesterday talking about and he was right that there are about five counties that don't have high courts to date, which is contrary to the constitution. There are about one more than a hundred that don't more than a hundred uh, constituencies that don't have a court at all. The problem is the judiciary and judicial service commission really wants to have courts in everywhere so that there is access to justice. But for them to do, they have to go back to the executive to give them money. Now, now uh, if the executive does not give them money then there will no, the raya will suffer because the raya will now not have access to justice and then independence of the judiciary will be stifled you've mentioned money which makes me want to ask this honorable mudavadi said this mm -hmm. the document has very good provisions Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, uh, he said that the strength of the Senate needs to be looked at again that the articles that have uh, that the articles that have when touched tend to downgrade the role of the Senate when it comes to allocation of resources to the counties. Mm -hmm. It requires a review. Mm -hmm. Does that require a review? I remember even the deputy president himself mentioned about this, and uh, he, 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 and the deputy said that it would be ironical to release more funds to them when the Senate has been down, downgraded because the BBI proposes to increase the allocation of funds to the counties from the current 15 to to, 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 to 35. Mm -hmm. Aguko, that statement is a lie. It's it a lie. been downgraded. In fact, Article 98. The amendment is only to the extent that it is now introducing the 50-50 in terms of gender, mm. ensuring that that elusive gender principle is achieved in the bicameral house of Senate. Mm. But in terms of their work as participants of lawmaking, as uh, the people who protect the, the counties, it is still there. But look, the women of this country, why is it that we don't want to give them an opportunity to make decisions of the amount of money that is going to the counties because the senate protects the interests of the counties and they also participate in the equitable share among the counties that is guided by article 2 or 3 that gives the criteria it is not guided by what the the, the senate says so, so it is it's wrong not a, it's not a downgrade no uh, it's Julius. not a downgrade what they would have done what in our view as a party that we think can be made better to make it an upper house with veto powers, uh, so Julius? that they can check the excess of a lower house uh, if they do or they make laws that are injurious. That's it. Uh, uh, okay, let me hear you, your, your, your comments on this. Thank you. Did you know that, know that under the current Article 123 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. there are two types of senators. Uh -huh. There are elected senators, and then there are the non-elected senators. The nominated. Yes. Now, in terms of decision making in Senate, the decisions that the non-elected senators don't take. Yes. Mm -hmm. The speaker is given the mandate to declare that a particular de de decision affects counties. Exactly. And then a particular de decision does not affect counties. counties. Now, a decision that does not affect counties, then everybody will vote. Mm -hmm. A decision that affects counties, only the elected senators will vote. I remember uh, Delegation. Just, just, just recently when there was a stalemate in, the yes. in, in terms of, uh, of sharing of revenue, uh, the senators that uh, are nominated did not participate. They were, they were being excluded. Even if there was a, a vote to be taken, mm. they are not allowed to vote. And do you know who they are? They are women. Because, so, so, ma so, because majority of the nominated senators, are, I think they are almost 17 or 18, yes, yes, who yes. are women. Mm. So that basically means that women were excluded from taking decisions Actually that it are is discriminative. discriminatory. So now, the current amendment uh -huh. proposes to have Two senators from each county, mm -hmm. one man, one, 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 one woman, with equal, equal powers, so that there will be no discrimination as to whether a particular matter affects. Is counties there or any not. downgrade when it comes to the Senate looking into county uh, no, allocation? None, 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 none at all. No, none. none let's, all. let's take a look at the tweets. The hashtag <coughs> is uh, the stand KE. We have you, uh, Eunice and, uh, is saying, I need an honest answer to this if there is one. <laughs> How do we get into BBI, assuming it will pass with the ethnicity? mindset and still say there will be national unity 
I'm sure parties will still work, will still work with ethnic uh, numbers to form coalitions. That is why I said it is a work in progress. Mm. That is why we are having this conversation. So that people are read for, those who, ca those who cannot read are read for this document. Those who are able to read, read for themselves. Mm. So that they are able to engage in this discourse from a point of information. So that mm. we are not misled by whoever is talking. Because okay. tr truly speaking, people have already taken, uh, the conversation is already almost taking ethnic uh, balkanization. Let's, 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 let's go to, this is uh, Mata Karua. Uh, BBI is not a national conversation, but a conversation of two, two friends and their allies to the exclusion of others. A breaking bridges initiative. <laughs> uh, I saw Mata Karua presenting before the BBI. Mm. She gave her views. Mm -hmm. It is ridiculous for her not to defend the views that she presented before this task force. And therefore, that is very worrying from her as a leader. Number two, national conversations means a conversation that belongs and involves all Kenyans. I remember this task force going to 47 counties. And even when Corona came, they managed to meet the Rift Valley team that they had not met before Corona. And therefore, it is a lie to say that it is between two friends. But even as we say that, the two friends that he's talking about, she's talking about, I want to believe they're Railo Dinga and Uru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. These are gentlemen who went for a contest and competed. One of them swore himself in, one of them was swore by the instruments of power as provided with the constitution. And therefore, the conflict that it was creating, the people who lost their jobs. Baby Pendo lost her life. Their parents were there. Uh -huh. You cannot say that it's not a national conversation while there are people who lost their lives. You okay. cannot say there's not a national conversation let's, while there are people who lost business. Let's take a look at uh, what Ahmed Nasir said. His Excellency Uru must give Kenyans 18 months to digest and internalize the, the BBI report once he receives it tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, it's a complex and very difficult document for Wanjiku to understand and appreciate. That was uh, the tweet sent, I think that was on Sunday. <laughs> okay, uh, we have David D. said, uh, COK provides, the constitution provides for two processes of amendment, popular initiative and legislative. Correct. There is no provision for an executive initiative. The BBI task force is an executive body gazetted and financed by presidential... Le, uh, le, let me just attack that immediately. Uh. I'm sure David is watching. Uh. Let me tell you, that is a lie. It is true the constitution gives two routes to amend. Popular initiative that goes through the county, like and, we did with and, and, and parliamentary. Uh -huh. Now, he is bringing in the aspect of executive initiative, which is non-existent, to ridicule the process that it is an executive project. It is not. And Article 257, and Wakili here will confirm, that gives the provision for popular initiative, says any promoter, a promoter can be executive, can be Wakili, can be Okango, can be you, shall meet the threshold of one million signatures and submit with a bill or general propositions. And therefore, it does not exclude executive as a promoter. So uh, what's your take on that? If I may add, hmm. you know, what does the word popular initiative means. The word popular must, uh, be, uh, must be read from the context of the population. Correct. It has to originate from the population. But an idea can only be conceived by an individual at a <coughs> time. Okay. Once conceived, the conceiver of the idea can sell it to the populace. Once the populace adopt it and embrace it, it becomes popular initiative. All right. Now, so many, so many tweets, so many comments. You cannot be able to sample them up. Um, just one by David. And some BBI is the solution to Kenya as a country. There won't be any fight against uh, f uh, uh, again after every election. No blood will be shed. Whatever correction to be done could be necessary. Okay, let me just sample just one more comment. This is Odongo. He's saying, Aguko, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm watching you uh, enjoying the show. We have one more tweet by, this is um, uh, Evans. He's saying, watching from Zimmerman, Kazi Ikoshwari Sana. Uh, the reason why wheelbarrow is being used doesn't mean we don't want to embrace m modernity. We are only using wheelbarrows for substance use. 
that is what uh, Dongo is saying. All right, so um, our time is uh, not on our side, but I'd like to give you each just 30 seconds to give us a final remark about the BBI report and how moving forward the country or the nation should be like. Let me start with you, Julius. Thank you, Ram. This BBI report is a good report. Uh, I started by saying so, and I would add Kenyans to read it. Let's not allow ourselves to be uh, read for. And let's not also allow ourselves to say that since Juma has read it and Juma has told me what it contains, so, so I believe him. Okay. If we are able to read it, this document is good. It may not be perfect, but surely I tell you, mm -hmm. it will answer most of our problems. Mm -hmm. And that's where our focus should be. Uh -huh. It is time for national conversation. The report is out. Jisome. Right. And once you jisome, make a decision and remember... This report is not an individual's report. It is a report that culminates from the people of Kenya. We have so many of recommendations that will benefit all of us. All right. Read it. All right. Thank you very much for uh, your comments. That was uh, uh, Frederick Okango, Third World Alliance Secretary General, and uh, Julius Juma, a constitutional lawyer. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. Sure. Thank you. Now, remember, we are live. We are uh, uh, that's on our website, www.y254.co.ke. Keep tweeting and keep texting. The hashtag is uh, the stand KE at Ramaguko and at Y254 channel. That brings us to the end of this uh, uh, evening conversation. It was all, all about understanding the BBI. Remember, it is your civic duty to, to read and understand it. My name is Ramaguko. God bless you. Have a good night. This is a stand. See you again next week on Tuesday at 8 p.m.